Hi guys, welcome back to the CS Classroom. Today what we're going to do is learn how to use the graph element in PySimple GUI, which allows us to like move around and draw shapes. So we're going to look at a two examples, this being the first, and then a more complex example. Now, this can be useful for displaying like different shapes and maybe, you know, configurations of shapes. Um, and for most simple use cases, it's fine. If you want to go beyond that and build an actual game, you probably need to learn PyGame. Nevertheless, Let's get started and see what we can do with this. So what we're going to do here is we have a window right here. Um, we're going to draw a square that we can actually move around. Uh, we're going to draw a circle. We're, we're going to place an image. And we're actually just going to draw a random polygon, like just a random shape, using a series of points. So the first thing we're going to do is import PySimpleGUI. Uh, as SG as usual. Uh, next, we're going to specify the graph size as a constant. So that means that this right here is going to be 400 by 400. So 400 pixels wide and 400 pixels high. So 400 by 400. Um, we're going to specify a starting point which is where our, um, our square is actually going to start, where it's going to be placed when we open up the application. Notice these are all tuples with an xy coordinate. And then we're going to specify the initial size of the square. Um, we will get to specifying the size of these other elements later on, but for now we're just focusing on the square. And we're going to create our layout. And our layout is essentially just going to be this, which is a graph element. Um, it's similar to if you've used JavaScript before, there's a canvas element where you can sort of draw stuff. I would argue that's probably more capable than this graph element, but it kind of plays the same role. So we're creating a 2D array as usual, except we're just going to have sg.graph in here. So we're going to have graph bottom left equals 0, 0. Uh, we also want to specify canvas size. Actually, right here. Um, OK, yeah, that's fine. We need to have this in parentheses. And let's specify canvas size first, actually. So that canvas size is going to be the same as this right up here. 400 by 400. Um, we've got, so we already typed out graph bottom left, and that's just going to specify what the bottom left point of our graph is. Um, and this allows you to sort of orient your graph. So you can specify, OK, if we say 0, 0 on the graph, that means that's going to be on the bottom left, so right here. And additionally, if we say um, graph top right, actually, this could just be graph size, because we already have this right up here. And equally, this could be graph size as well. So graph size was 400, uh, was comma 400, comma 400. And so if we're saying graph top right is 400, comma 400, that means that the top right right here is going to be at the coordinates 400 by 400. So again, this allows us to specify to like orient ourselves within the graph element. Then also, we might have a graph element that's like 800 by 800, and only part of that will be. Um, an area that we can use. And this allows us to do that. So I'm just going to put it like this. Um, OK, and let's continue to specify some um, some different parameters. So first, we're going, to, we're going to do enable events equals true. And this allows us to um, basically capture click events. So when the user clicks on the canvas or in the graph element, um, we're also going to do drag submits equals true. Hmm. And what this means is that when we drag an element like that, so whenever there's mouse movement on the graph element, that's going to be captured as well. Um, we're going to specify a background color of light blue. Now, you can pretty much use anything you want, but I chose light blue. Um, one, because <clears throat> actually it was in the tutorial that I based this off of. But also, like, you want to choose a light color, because otherwise you're not going to be able to see what you're putting on the graph element. So just something to keep in mind. 
then we're going to have a key, and that key is just going to be graph. And this is going to be quite important because a lot of what we do with the graph element is going to involve capturing events and values in a fairly complex manner. And we'll say pad equals zero, so no real padding. Okay, so that's our graph element. Let's go through and just see like where the error might be. Uh, let me do that. Okay, got to close that out. Just make sure we've got all our commas right here. sg.graph. Okay, so it seems there's an issue right here with this. Let's go ahead. Okay, so we need to close this parentheses. And then we're going to close. I'm just going to close this right down here. And okay, I think that all kind of works out then. Yeah, one of the big one of the big problems with um, layouts in particular is it's very easy to make mistakes um, in this sort of two D array structure. Anyways, now we're going to create a window with this layout as we usually would. So we're going to say window equals sg dot window. Uh, we're going to call this simple square. Actually, let's just call this uh, graph example one. Um, we'll specify our layout, uh, finalize equals true, and margins equals zero, zero. And that allows us to see this as just the graph element with the header. Now we're going to say graph equals window graph. So we're basically getting our graph element initially um, from our window element from our window object right here and we're storing in a variable just because we're going to be using this a lot and it's easier to use as just graph rather than window followed by the key so graph equals window graph and actually now what i'm going to do before i even so we are going to have an event loop where we um handle specifically the movement of the square we can't move any of these other any of the other shapes we're going to get into that in our next tutorial um, so I'm just going to create this right here, and I'll just put that. Um, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and draw and place some of these shapes. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw uh, this square. And it, I mean, we're going to say square equals draw a rectangle. I mean, a square is a rectangle after all. And we're going to say start. Um, okay, I got to specify it that way. Okay, we're going to say start because start is going to be where we place the square when we first start the application. So that's going to be right in the middle, 200, 200. Sorry, that wasn't really 200, 200, something like that. So that's where it's going to start right here. That's going to be the first parameter. Um, and then next, what we're actually going to do is... We're going to specify the size of the square itself. So we're going to have start zero plus square size. And actually, what this isn't this isn't necessarily specifying the size of the square itself, but it's kind of specifying the boundaries of the square, right? So that means that vertically, this is going to be um, 40 pixels from where we started. So it's going to be 240 and then two, and then 240 horizontally, or sorry, 240 horizontally and 240 vertically. So right here, we're actually just specifying the boundaries of the square based on our starting point. So we're going to have uh, start one. Plus square size, which is like a slightly weird thing, weird way of doing it. Um, and there are other ways to do it as well, but for now, we're just going to do that. Okay, cool. And we're just going to make it black. Now, what we're going to do as well is we're going to draw some of these other shapes, and we're going to place this image right here. So we're going to draw a circle as well. So we're going to say circle. We're going to say circle equals graph dot draw circle. 
Um, again, we're going to start it off. Well, I think we're going to probably start it off at a different um, position. We'll say 150, 150. So that means it's going to be 150, 150. And that's where we're going to put our circle. We first start the application. We're just going to specify the radius, which is just going to be square size. So that's just going to be 40 pixels, as we specified right here. So it's just going to have a radius of 40, 40 pixels. And then we're going to, and then what we're going to do is we are going to just specify the color. So let's say fill color equals blue. Now this one is perhaps of more interest, like just because you can do a few more things if you have, if you can place an image. So we're going to say image equals um, graph dot draw image. And just to give you like a quick idea of how we're going to do this. So right here, I actually have this camera.png in the same directory as my code. So I'm going to say graph.draw image, file name equals uh, camera.png. So we'll go ahead and just uh, hide that right there. And then we're going to put that at 100. So location equals 100. 100. And let's fix, let's fix this typo right up here. OK, cool. And finally, we're going to have polygon equals graph the draw polygon. And so this is actually, this is both fairly, I mean, it can be kind of messy, but this is probably one of the cooler commands because we can basically just draw a shape based on an array of points. So actually we're gonna say polygon points and we're gonna make, we're gonna create a list equals, we're gonna have 10, 10. It's gonna be the first point, uh, 60, 60. It's gonna be the next point, um, 30, 90. Seventy five, seventy five, and ten thirty six. And notice all of these points are tuples. Now, one of now this is actually like so you can basically specify whatever points you want, and then uh, PySimple GUI will just create a shape that is enclosed by all of these points. So that means that this allows you to actually create some pretty complex like three D shapes and animations and stuff like that. This is probably the most interesting command out of all of these. Um, but anyways, we're going to put that in as the first parameter. We're going to say polygon points. Uh, line color equals yellow. For, for some reason, I decided to do that. And then we're going to say line width. equals five. And I guess I'll just put this down here and then we can say uh, fill color equals black. So here we were actually able to specify line width and line color, which we didn't do previously. And we'll say fill color equals black. And notice all this was done even before um, I actually got to the event loop. So we can just go ahead and draw this and display it on a canvas even before we get to the event loop. But now let's go ahead and let's do that. So we're going to have event values equals window.read. Uh, we'll say if event equals sg.winclose, just kind of the standard boilerplate to allow us to be able to close the window whenever we want. Break. And then we're going to say uh, if event equals graph. So this means that if someone clicks on the graph, Um, then we're going to get, we're going to say x, y. That's going to be a double equal sign. x, y equals graph. And window graph dot relocate. So what this is basically going to get, okay, so that actually doesn't make sense. It shouldn't just be graph, it should be values graph. 
So this is going to get the coordinate at which um, the mouse clicked on the graph. So for example, that would be values graph. Um, and actually the thing is when we drag this, because we have uh, drag submits as well, when we drag this around, we're continually going to be hitting this event graph event, and this XY will continually update. So when we click on it, this is going to, we're going to hit the event graph, and this is going to update. But also when we drag, then also this is going to be continually updated whenever it changes. So it could be, you know, dozens, hundreds of times, depending on how much we drag um, a given, depending on how much we drag anything around or how much we move anything around in the graph element. So this is constantly working right here when we click or when we, gra when we drag stuff on the graph element. So we're going to say window graph dot relocate figures. We're going to say relo relocate figure, which means that we're actually going to be able to move our square whenever we pop, whenever we click or drag on the graph element. Hence, we have square from right up here, which we drew. And then we're going to say x. minus square size. Divided by 2. y equals uh, y plus square size. Well, we got square. And then we're just going to say and basically what's it, what that's doing is that's moving this square to another position based on x and y, so based on where the, um, the element, or based on where the mouse currently is in the graph, or in the graph element right here. And it's basically moving it to an element, to a coordinate. So for example, if you click, click right here, then it's going to move, so if you click right there, then it's essentially moving the center of the square. So we're moving to an element with an x coordinate um, that is basically x minus half the, half the square and then y plus half the square. So that allows us to effectively move the center of the square and have the rest of the square go along with it if that makes any sense. I mean the point is these are the point like these are the coordinates to which we're moving our square, the x and y coordinates. How, how you do it is up to you but that's what this is accomplishing right here. And then we're just going to do window.close. So Basically, the idea is we're drawing all of our shapes using these commands up here, which you can see more of in the Python documentation, although it's really difficult to find. And um, additionally, whenever we click or drag anything, um, whenever we click or drag anything on the square element, this event gets triggered right here. We get the coordinates um, of wherever the mouse was, and then we can move or we can basically do whatever we want based on those coordinates. Now, this tutorial is almost 20 minutes long, so I'm probably going to um, save like doing more complex movements with shapes for the next tutorial. Um, so if you want to see more tutorials about the subject, please remember to like this video and subscribe to it. I will put that one up shortly. Um, but anyways, before, um, before I let you guys go, I'm going to go ahead and just run our code instead of just the demo so we can do some troubleshooting. All right, looks. It says here, init got an unexpected keyword, enable event. All right, so that means this has got to be enable events, I think. Yeah, it's enable events, cool. Okay, that seems to work. We've got our camera right here, our circle right here, and our polygon right here. And oh, okay, we got a problem right there. Just problem finding your key graph. Okay, so I specified this right here as the key. Um, and right here, oh, okay, right here, I needed to do graph. That's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just execute this code again. So that works, and we can move that around like so. So again, um, this is just the first part of, I think probably what's going to be a two-part tutorial in how to work with shapes in PySimple GUI. Um, please remember to like this video and subscribe to this channel to see the second part. Um, there we'll cover Again, we'll cover more complex movements, like how to move different shapes, um, how to erase shapes, and how to create shapes in real time, rather than just pre-creating them as they are here. So stay tuned, and have a nice day.